this. You want to watch a little Bill Maher? Oh, boy, would I? <laughs> people, it's time for Bill Maher, people. Oh, man. Hold on. I think somebody wants to hang out. Uh-oh. Do you want to hang out? If you go downstairs, someone will feed you. <laughs> go. Wow. Okay. You got to decide. Someone's being very loud. You're being very inconsiderate, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So nothing out of the ordinary here. Just a little goofy Bill Maher action. Uh, so Bill Maher was uh, doing his new rules segment. And as always, he ends with a long monologue. And I just want to say, like, I watched a lot of Bill Maher during the George W. Bush era. He was he was really great during that period. Uh, mm -hmm. Something really happened during the Trump era, and, and he is no longer really that good anymore. Uh, and it's been that way for a while now. Uh, but this one's called Progressophobia. Oh, boy. You ready? As ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> PayPal, PayPal. The new rule from now on when Joe Biden veers off into one of his long winded stories that seem to be off topic, everyone must realize he usually does have a point. But those of you who are over 50, how often did you ever see, how often did you ever see advertisements on television with black and white couples? Not a joke. I challenge you, find today when you turn on the stations sit on one station for two hours, and I don't know how many commercials we'll see, lay eight to five, two to three out of five have mixed race couples in them. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like what do you, you're, you're somebody who like, you, you watch Ryan Murphy and all that kind of stuff, and you, you look into Hollywood and you, t you, you know a lot about like representation in film, like how salient is an argument like that? I think it's really funny that the president is asking people to watch commercials. I mean, like, what, what is he saying about it? Is he saying, like, wh why did he bring that up? What was the context of that? <laughs> I think it was the Tulsa speech, but he says it all the time. Is he trying to say, like, hey, old folks, did you know that, the that like, demographics are, like, changing? That, like, sometimes people marry people of a different race than them? Like, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's marketing, you know, like, uh, it's, it's marketing. It's, you can get, you know, there's a white person in the ad. There's a person of another race in the ad. People right. of any race can buy our product. So buy our product. It's, I mean, I'd, I'd be interested in the studies on that though, too, actually, like, uh, I, I did see one time someone was like, uh, some guy on Twitter was like, there are no white men in ads anymore. And then a black woman retweeted it like, so you agree, their representation in ads is like important. <laughs> like, <laughs> not seeing yourself is bothering you? Oh, wow. What must that be like, you know? Yeah. Even though you, white, that, that's not also not true. You just have to look yeah. and you see very easily. I mean, I, I, I think that... If you went to a, if you went to the, if you watch TV in the 1950s, you would be like, you would, as somebody from now, you would be like, oh my goodness, like there are no black people on TV anywhere. Oh, yeah. And you would probably draw the conclusion based on that, that there was a deeper problem of, ra of racism in the society. Mm -hmm. um, whereas today you would watch TV and see a lot of different people and you would know, know that the, the attitude has changed to some degree. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of like, mm -hmm. oh, you can, it's no, no, like go ahead. what you were saying about uh, like, uh, like trans stuff in the military, how like, yes, as like lefties, we're all like, you know, all the military, but that like being a thing does show something about our society moving towards acceptance of trans people. Like they're advertisements. So you know, not great, but it is like kind of pointing towards a, you know, we're more welcoming of, of differences. 
mm -hmm. at the same time. But it's also not going to be like revolutionary because it is ads, right? You know. <laughs> And at the end of the day, they they wouldn't do it if they thought it would really hurt their bottom line. So exactly, yeah. Um, and you can, and it's funny with with all the pride and commercialization of pride that's going on right now. I've been oh, reading yeah. about, like, I read about the 1970s and how like the cor corporations were on the complete opposite side of it. Like they were mm -hmm. they were against, you know, they were like they wouldn't come out and speak out on behalf of gay people until the gay movement won a certain amount of concessions, and then they were like, oh. Well, now if if they're not going to get chased out of towns by like vicious, angry mobs, they're going to be living places and buying stuff. So mm -hmm. now we'll now we'll be friendly to them, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so here's some more Bill Maher uh, on that subject. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I'm going to tell you. I know exactly, it sounds president. kind of out of left field, but actually Uncle Joe is pointing liberals towards something they need to be more aware of. They have a bad case of progressive phobia. That's the phrase coined by Steven Pinker to describe a brain disorder that strikes liberals and makes them incapable uh. of recognizing progress. Steven Pinker. A brain <laughs> disorder. Yeah, like uh, the projection like, is so deep. Right. Like clearly he's yeah. annoyed by this straw man he's constructed and has has endowed it with a brain disorder. I'm also I'm confused. Wait. So what what does progressophobia mean exactly? Is it it's it's liberals fear of what was that? <laughs> I think his point his point is that progressophobia means that you it's the wrong word progressophobia, but it's like you're afraid to admit that there's been progress on things. In and other he words, is the liberals? Who? Yeah, yeah. Like in other words, people who are like, oh, there's like they're like, still asking for stuff. Is it like yeah. that? Oh, they're still, they're yeah, still okay. like they, they haven't, they refuse to recognize that like things have gotten better. Uh, is what I feel like literally is. everybody would admit that things have in some way like gotten better. At least if we're talking about like I don't know the number of interracial people in advert uh, couples in advertisements like yeah and i'm sure it would depend on i mean it would depend on a person right like i don't think somebody who is you know working on an egg farm for a dollar a day and living in a shack with yeah. five, five other people from who just arrived here from el salvador would be like yeah this, is, this country rocks <laughs> like yeah you know it's still bad for those people but like we've we've managed to make some compromises and some agreements that allow our country to continue to exist while at the same time, it's not an absolute white supremacist hierarchy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like some social concessions have been made, which is great. Mm -hmm. If you're like a leftist leftist, then you want more, but, and you want like the, the structure to be inherently different, but yeah. like, yes, if we're going to do things generally the way we're doing them, then like, it's nice for stuff to get better. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's like situational blindness. Only what you can't see is that your dorm in 2021 is better than the South before the civil war. I have no idea what that is. If you think America is more racist now than ever, more sexist than before women could vote and more homophobic than when blowjobs were a felony, you have progressophobia and should adjust your mask because it's covering your eyes. Do people think that? <laughs> mask joke? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Is that supposed to be a like, you're still wearing masks and that's... Like, is that a dunk on people for... Like, those progressives are still wearing masks and stuff like that when they don't have to or something? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Don't know. It's confusing. You know, yeah. Before... I mean, also, like, when when Jim Crow was happening, people could have said, like, gee, you know, they used to be much meaner to Irish people. Like, we yeah. can't say there's been no progress on that. Like, what? Yeah. Before 2012, every time gay marriage was put before states' voters, it lost. 35 times in a row. Now it's the law of the land in every state. Even half of Republicans are for it. The other half are for closeted gay sex. <laughs> the but does he realize how much struggle it took to, like, get to that point? like how much movement yeah. struggle and like making people upset and angry and like how tenuous 
the victories are, that they could be reversed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of those states, I mean, California literally voted to be like, oh, never mind on the whole gay marriage thing. Like it was legal and they voted to the whole Prop 8 thing yep. in like 2008 or so. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. And also like, what's funny to me is that this idea of like, well, things are better now, like implying that like, so you should just stop like, what people should just get complacent and just like be fine with however things are because they used to be worse and it could be worse. Like, <laughs> right. And gay protesters used to be, we're here, we're queer, get used to it. Well, we did. This is pride month and it's not even a big deal anymore. 30 days of parades and festivals celebrating a cause that was once so divisive. Ellen had to pretend to be straight. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. I remember that movie yeah. and being like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Fly pride flags now. Disney celebrates it. By federal law, every single TV show must include a storyline about lesbians having a baby. That's if not someone true. announces they're gay on TV, it's met with thunderous applause. My accountant says, Yaz Queen. <laughs> you literally can't find a major American corporation that doesn't do something for Pride Month. NASCAR does it. Raytheon, maker of high-tech lethal weaponry that kills people from the sky, does it. And I hear next year they're going to paint You Go Girl on the side of their missile. It's so funny because he's so close to getting it. Like, yeah, but he doesn't get it. He's like, and isn't that a good thing? So why are you complaining? And it's like, because it's not because because why is Raytheon a thing? Why are there shooting right. like and it's, like it's like it's yeah. almost a, a an indictment of rainbow capitalism. But then he's like, he's just like, yep, so it's normal. So there's nothing else that the LGBTQs could ever want. Like, yeah. It'd be like, I mean, it, I always go back to the Buffalo Soldiers, where it'd be like, if he was, if it was the 1870s, he'd be like, look, black people are serving in the military now. Like, we've obviously come a long way. Like, never mind the fact that the Buffalo Soldiers and anyone else who was in the military in the 1870s was participating in the genocide of Indians. <laughs> like, you know, it, it, there's the, the, like, just because we've gotten... A, we've made progress in a particular area of racism. Like, yeah, we've made a lot of progress in terms of just raw, like how people getting along better and not worrying about what color skin you are. Like a black person can walk in a room and not have 99% chance that the room full of white people is going to go, you don't belong in here. Okay. That's a yeah. big progress. But like, there's, you know, like just because we've like, just because we've, we've made progress there doesn't mean that, like we're still all in it together and we're all in it for imperialism. So like, what's the, yeah. you know, what does that say for like brown people in Middle East, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it's not just LGBT issues. Not that long ago, I knew people who went to prison for growing pot. And today you can legally smoke it for fun in 43% of the country and I will. <laughs> I might jump ahead a little bit because it, Even it goes like on and on. But being outwardly cruel to people who are different. He does make a friends joke, friends which I wanted to say. And a majority from Microsoft, 50% of Target, 55% of the Gap, as companies become desperate to look like. Oh, this is uh, the percentage of gay and LGBT workers at working for these companies. Okay, so the workers, what about like the CEO? What about the like yeah. the boards? We've the... got more gay slaves than we've ever had yeah. at working at Target. <laughs> that is fascinating that 55% of people who work for the Gap though. I feel like that's a pretty like straight brand, you know yeah. what I mean? Like Yeah. I also I like this point about like weed. I never I don't really think of weed as a left issue anymore because I just feel yeah. like everybody smokes weed left and right and like yeah there most, are a ton yeah. of lulbertarians right-wing lulbertarians as i like to call them who are pro the guy yeah. I, and like also like if, if i the, were hypothetically yeah. to get weed in virginia right now mm -hmm. <laughs> i would yeah. get it from a right-wing person probably like right it's obviously good that like people who smoke pot will not go to jail eventually if they if they keep going in this direction but it's also like of all the things that could like ease, ease our suffering under capitalism, they give us this like supplement that just helps us like yeah. chill a little bit, like mentally, you know. And nothing about like the guys who are in prison who are, who are well in, you know, people of all genders who are in prison, especially like people of color, you know, for weed related offenses. Like, yeah, that's a whole thing too.
Absolutely. Here's oh, was the... that Kim Kardashian I saw? Oh, she'll be here. Don't worry. Of course. It's, oh, a, it's a whole hodgepodge. It's a real, <laughs> it's a real mural here. A commercial. <laughs> She's going to give you the Friends joke because the, uh, the Friends reunion we just had looked weird. Because if you even suggested a show today about six people, all of whom were straight and white, the network would laugh you out of the room. And then, why would you go into a room and say, "I want to make a show about <laughs> six straight white people"? Yeah, that'd be a weird pitch. But also, like, it was weird, like, for them all to be like straight and white in New York City, and maybe less so in the '90s. But like, people were saying, like, by the time How I Met Your Mother and Girls, you know, were on TV, like, yeah, that was a big criticism because it wasn't realistic. Like, yeah. All right, let's let's try to get through the rest of this garbage. Uh, uh, we got to do the Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian oh. wearing cornrows even though it happened on Snapchat and George Wallace standing in a doorway didn't. Because here's the thing, kids. There actually was a world before you got here. Okay, wait, pause it. Oh. No, snap <laughs> Snapchat is, is done, though, because Kylie tweeted a few years ago, does anybody even use Snapchat anymore? I don't. It's sad. And then Snapchat lost, like, a billion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I mean, first of all, that. Second of all, like, are, is he saying, like, Kim Kardashian is using a black style and that means like progress because many black people have talked yeah. about this. That's called cultural appropriation and is generally frowned upon. I can give you the, 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 the stream of thought here. It went, uh, the Derek Chauvin went to jail. Um, she got in trouble for wearing cornrows, but George Wallace actually stopped people from going to school Therefore, millennials' heads oh, before you got here. exploded. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also funny because a lot of the people who like called out, you know, the the way that the Kardashians brand like mm -hmm. uh, is very appropriative are also people saying like, like, hey, people need to learn about like the Tulsa race massacre and like Juneteenth and all that stuff too. Like, yeah. it's not usually a single <laughs> issue thing. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, I understand like, oh, we shouldn't be so upset about like uh, a celebrity wearing an appropriative outfit. We should be more upset about like tangible racism, like systemic racism or whatever. But I, I don't, I mean, he's making all, he's making an argument for not being upset about racism right now. So yeah. You know, he even, and then at one point during it, you know, and I guess we could, we could move on from this, but like at one point he, he says, yes, of course we have a long way to go. We still have racism in our society, you know, but nine more minutes of me complaining about how everything's fine now. Yeah. So anyway, Bill Mark. Listen up, kids. Get off the Snapchat. He is such a he he's such a like person personification of like old man yells at cloud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 